Hello and welcome to another episode of This Bitch is My Subscription Box Again, starring this bitch. So about a year ago over the summer I did a two episodes, only two, of a series that was Bookish Makeup Monday and I wanted to do another bookish inspired makeup look, however I wanted to change things up a little bit. I am changing the title of this series to Bookish uh, Beauty um, just because I don't want to only make it about makeup or because I'm not good at posting on a set day like Monday. And also I know that Bookish Beauty is a YouTube channel. I will link that YouTube channel down below. Um, I am not claiming that I came up with this or that, is it in, that, is, that it is entirely mine, but I do really like it so I am using that from now on, but I will link that down below. And I have started watching Bailey Sarian, who is more of a um, true crime, well she is a true crime, talks about a true crime story and does her makeup, and I've kind of taken inspiration from that. So instead of telling you as I go along, um, I'm just going to do it and then put the products that I use down in the description below. But without further ado, let's get into it. Today we are going to be discussing The Female of the Species by Mindy McGinnis. I think it's a worthy thing to say that I gave this book one star and it is going to kind of be a rant and talking about the things I didn't like about it. So if you really liked this book and you don't want to hear anyone talking negatively about it, I would suggest kind of tapping out of the video now because I have a lot of notes about how I didn't like it. So yeah, just going to, you know, say a spoiler warning now um, and probably edit it in the beginning. By the way, future me, there are spoilers in this. So if you haven't read this book, I would suggest, you know, um, being a little cautious going through because I am going to be spoiling it. So just so you are aware, I feel as though this book could have done a lot more than it actually did. I just kind of feel like the idea of it was there and it was good and it just fell flat. It could have, like I said, done a lot better than it did. I think the actual idea of this in the commentary on rape culture actually takes a backseat to all the high school drama and relationships that happen in this story. And while I do think the commentary on rape culture is kind of prevalent. I don't think it is as front and center as this book advertises it to be. I feel like a lot of the characters in here could have had more development than they actually had. I think the only character that had any development whatsoever was Jack and he just had a little shift in development. I think everyone else kind of stayed static throughout the entire story, which I guess it could work for some stories, but not really for this one. I feel like this one, the whole point was to make some dynamic characters that change throughout the novel and that just didn't happen. I do understand that this is a quite loved book in the book community and I do kind of see where a lot of that love is coming from. Like I could understand why people love it. I just, like I said previously, I think it kind of fell flat for me personally and I think people could enjoy this. I'm not saying that people can't enjoy this because I didn't. It's completely not my place to say if this is a objectively bad book or not. I just didn't enjoy it and these are the reasons and the things that I found. I'm gonna take a second to talk about the author specifically and because this isn't the first book I've read from her, I have noticed some different things that she includes in her books that I find a little unsavory. First of all, she has an interesting way of writing her main heroines. A lot of her main heroines, at least uh, the three books I've read are the, the Female of the Species, Heroine, and uh, Not a Drop to Drink. And all three of these include like an unlikable main character that you're supposed to root for, I guess. But all of her main heroines are similar and I never really find myself rooting for them. Like they just don't seem to me like someone that should be winning in this situation. For example, in this book the main character is a murderer and while I understand her motives to do it aren't entirely self-involved and are at least a little bit, you know, noble I guess. It just doesn't seem like I should be rooting for her 
and to kind of be pushed into a situation where I have to feels a little, I don't know, I didn't, I, it, it rubbed me the wrong way. And then some of the things I picked on, uh, picked up on in her books that I kind of, I wrote down as her trademarks are the token lesbian that isn't at all fleshed out and generally has a problematic element. Um, I can't remember the one in the female of the species if I'm being entirely honest. It has been a little while since I've read this. But I know the heroin one was pretty problematic considering it's the only LGBT character in that book and she's like kind of pressuring the straight girls into sex. It just seems like, I don't know, a bit problematic to me. And then to the sex negativity. So I can completely understand a young adult character not wanting to have sex. That's completely fine. That's something that teens go through. Some teens don't want to have sex and that's completely fine. That's not my issue with these books. My issue is that the characters in Mindy McGinnis's books, the main characters, kind of push this not wanting to have sex on the reader and other characters within the book, kind of putting the virginal characters on a pedestal pretty much and saying that other female characters that have sex are less than in some way or another. It's not outright said, but the way everything is set up, the characters that the female characters that do have sex are always the unlikable characters, the more unlikable characters, and ones that you're really not supposed to root for, as opposed to the main character who you're apparently supposed to root for being that virginal being. And now kind of segueing into that like unlikable girl that does have sex brandly in this book, I didn't like how she was done at all because there was such an area there for her to have some kind of redemption arc. There was such a chance for her to have a great redemption arc and it was just kind of taken away from her because that area that she was given to redeem herself as a character just kind of wasn't used for that. It was used for I guess to make her even more unlikable, to make her worse, which I did not appreciate at all. Before I really could have rated the book a little higher and then that happened and I was like, mm -hmm. no mamacita, we give second chances in this house. She was first set up to be the bitchy cheerleader, um, like that really outdated stereotype of the bitchy cheerleader, you know the one, and then she was kind of Start, she kind of started getting her redemption by helping PK when PK was assaulted, but then she just went back downhill from there. She wanted Jack so badly that she couldn't put it past herself that he was gone. And there was literally a moment in this book where she was redeemed. Like she had a call with him and she was completely redeemed and then she just wasn't anymore because of what happened a little bit later. It just, that was a complete mess to me. I didn't appreciate that the basic idea of that was that, you know, you're kind of stuck with this. You're stuck with being bitchy because you were in the story previously. Like people can change. Like, we realize that people can change, right? I understand that not everyone does when given the chance, but people change. People do it. Alex's death. Alex's death seems on the surface to be the only thing that drives that whole scene forward, that whole moment forward. We don't even really get to see the scene at all. It just kind of happens. It's like really fast. And I mean, at least I didn't, I wasn't able to comprehend it completely because of the pace of it. It just all happened at once. Like we have, we didn't have any buildup. Let's be real here. We were told that Alex was also going to the church, you know, because Brantley was going to try and convince Jack to sleep with her. Classic Brantley. And so that's why she's there. 
that does seem kind of like a weak reason for her to be there anyway. So, okay. Uh, but and it is what it is. So we take it at surface level. Everything that's going on here, we're here. And then the guys that assaulted PK are there as well. They end up being there and they have guns and they set their guns down oh so conveniently so that when Alex comes in she can shoot one of them. It also seems like an easy out for the author to have taken with this character because I feel like if it had gone any other way we would have had to do something with Alex. She would have had to go to jail, she would have had to go to prison, something like that. So instead of taking the time to do that, to research what that would be like, um, and have like a court hearing or something like that, we just kind of get her dying. That's the big thing. And I wasn't entirely surprised. I was just kind of disappointed that it went this way because there, there were so many other ways to take it and this one kind of just wasn't it. So, you know, I'm not spoiling anything, but Mindy does have a track record for killing off characters that don't really need to die for the sake of driving the plot forward or whatever it is that we're doing here. And then there's this randomly like after she dies, Branley has a dick drawn on her locker and so PK and PK's friend, the token lesbian, I now remember who the token lesbian is. <laughs> they go around and erase all of them and what's her face? I don't remember her name then draws a vagina over the like front of the the entrance to the school which in itself isn't bad but you know she gets away with it like fine not that I think that you know all the guys should have gotten away with it and then she shouldn't have I think everyone should have been punished in that situation because it is destruction of school property which isn't your property so you shouldn't destroy it I understand the whole message behind it, like trying to be said, but I don't think it was put across in the most effective way possible. And then something that directly contradicts the whole guys not going inside and like, oh, guys are so bad, is the bathroom. So, you know, at the end, how PK goes in and she's erasing stuff from the girls' bathroom and there's so much in the girls' bathroom that she has to erase. And then she goes in the guys' restroom and there's only positive things. That is a direct contradiction of what you were previously trying to say, which is that men are pigs. Um, which, it's not that I disagree with that statement. It also is a blanket statement. We're just going to roll with it. The thing is, these two things directly contradict each other because your original thing was that because, like, men are just dumb and putting this stuff in there in destruction of property, you know, that's your whole point is that they are immature and don't understand and that's why they're not walking in under the vagina and that's why they're drawing dicks on walkers and everything. And then you show that these girls are, you know, the ones putting the truly mean things on the bathroom. And you erase those. And then you go into the guy's restroom. And it's all positive. And then something from her ex-boyfriend that's like, I didn't deserve her. So, you know, it is what it is. Also, one other thing I want to say. I have been to high school. I went four years at a public high school that was just terrible. I mean, it's not truly terrible, but like, it's not the greatest that I've ever heard of. And I've never seen writing on the walls of the bathrooms at my school. 
So is this something that actually happens? Like, please let me know. Because I'm curious. Did this actually happen at high schools? I've never seen it before. We also have this whole subplot of showing Alex in the Humane Society or like shelter or something like that to just kind of give her layers. You know, because everyone has layers. Everyone's like an onion that has layers. I guess. Shrek back in whatever year that came out. I'm not 100% sure. So <laughs> I, I'd, that was the only point of that. And so she could meet PK and PK could be a point of the story with Alex, I guess. I don't know. I, I honestly thought that was something else that just didn't need to be there. I don't know. That's my opinion though. While this book is trying to kind of abolish rape culture and make a commentary on it everything was mentioned in less than or in a maximum of seven chapters like yeah they're spread out but it was only seven chapters that ever mentioned anything about you know sexual assault rape culture that type of thing you would think that even if it's not mentioned a whole lot it would be something to drive the plot forward a whole lot, but it's also not. It's there to kind of show the depths of Alex's, like, psychotomy, I guess? Is that the right word? To show that she's a fucking psycho, basically. And that it's supposed to be alright because she is doing it against people that do this. And not that I think that people that sexually assault and rape women or men, or people, anyone, anyone at all, should be let free, but this isn't the way to do it. We're not, this isn't, no, it, it just rubbed me the wrong way because she was put on this pedestal for the violence that she bestowed upon men that sexually assaulted women and killed them and whatever. It just... I don't know, it, it didn't seem entirely right to me specifically. And like one of the last things I want to talk about is my kind of expectations going into this book. I have had this book on my radar since it came out and I believe 2016, I'm pretty sure it was 2016, because I met Mindy McGinnis, Mindy McGinnis came to my school and it was like right after this had come out and I wasn't able to get a copy of this book. She didn't have any copies of this book with her when she came. It was just the Not A Drop To Drink series and A Madness So Discreet. So it just was kind of, I, I had built it up in my head to be great because she was like, it's like a female Dexter. She was talking about it, how it was, she was excited about it being out and it kind of infected me that I was excited about it and I couldn't wait to read it and then I never got a chance to until this year like four years later you know as it goes it's fine you know as I've read Mindy McGinnis books Mindy McGinnis's books previously and my view of her writing had kind of gone down I, I didn't really enjoy it my expectations for this book kind of went down and I was still somehow disappointed because I was still harboring a little bit of that initial excitement about this female serial killer that was killing men that sexually assaulted, raped, and killed other women. And that's not what this is. So if you are preparing to kind of read this book because of that assessment of it, I mean, I don't know why you would be back here because I've been talking about spoilers this entire time, but if you didn't care about spoilers and you are watching up to this part and planning on reading it because of that assessment of it, that it is like a female Dexter, that she is a female serial killer killing people, um, killing men that sexually assault, rape, and murder other women and girls, that's not really what it is. So just so you are aware, Overall, I would give this book probably a C for effort and a D minus for execution. 
let me know down in the comments below what you think of you know this makeup look what you thought of the female of the species if you have read it if you haven't read it if you're planning on reading it anything like that and as always make sure to like and subscribe and i will see you sometime for a new one bye